On this episode of I Think I Know What the Hell I'm Doing Now, I think we have progress. I took every single element out yet again, put it back to the way it was supposed to be, hand filed and trimmed every one of these things to make sure that they're absolutely perfect in length, added the two on the end that were missing, took this box apart. I had to reflow all the solder joints in there. I had to remove the feeds off of there and, and re-solder them, had some problems in there. Talked to Dr. Jack of Compact Tenna for a while, and uh, he's very smart, like a brainiac, and basically said what everybody else said in the comments. You got something wrong, Eric. Well, here's what I know now. As my backyard's a mess, I just disconnected everything. I also added a protractor with a piece of hardware from my that's a bolt thing. At least now I can kind of see what my elevation is. Azimuth, I do by Armstrong method, which is the best I could do. There's the moon. Okay. Um, so I added some PVC here and made kind of a, a thing where, you know, I could have it like this and move it, right? All the elements are as perfectly straight as I can get them. All right. Um, so basically what I have now is about a 1.26 to one at 50.4 ohms. Phase is 90, return loss is like 27 dB, I think, per my rig expert. And uh, I added the wire, I extended that wire and kind of just soldered and heat shrinked and taped uh, for the switching. Nine to 15 volts applied to that. We'll switch the relay, which changes the circular polarization from right hand to left hand. Um, I could tell you that I'm not sure exactly if that's still working, but I just was, I just had this connected to, um, this right here. So I was using the rig expert Phobos FDR on UHF. I was using the Mirage, uh, D 1010 amplifier. Uh, by the way, because of where I am in Florida, I need to get a permit or a waiver to use more than 50 watts because I'm so close, I guess, to the Space Center. Um, but I didn't try transmitting much. I tried receiving. The goal was to try to receive one station on this thing. Now, when I was doing this, the moon was about 29, 30 degrees, all right? And on the HB9Q website, where there's a logger and chat and stuff, I was chatting with some big guns. That's what it's going to take is to get a schedule with a big gun on the other side. Now, uh, I did receive traces on Q65 from K5DOG. However, it wouldn't decode. And then a couple other guys were on there, uh, W2HRO and some other ones. And uh, they were seeing things too. I, I don't, I think I had some problems with my decode because uh, they sent me this link and said, hey, Eric, check this out. There's, there's sub bands, there's, uh, CFOM, which I guess tracks the frequency for Doppler on the, you know, for the moon, so the way it's going. So I got, I think I got some setup things to do, but the goal of this video is this. Um, I did say some things that sounded bizarre and did some things that were bizarre, like moving the reflectors and, <coughs> you know, uh, I, I, I put the antenna back to the way it was, added this up here, and um, received a trace when he was transmitting. However, did not decode. So I haven't given up yet. Um, I am super excited that I got the antenna to where it is. It's kind of uh, aggravating to burn weekends on this, but um, I do have it right now from what I understand. Now this may be wrong, right? Check this out. So I have, from my understanding, this is horizontal. And, and the way I know that if it's supposed to be or not i know circular polarizing but it's still a little fuzzy on that i understand the theory of changing polarization to and from but here's the deal um they were saying that i'm losing 3 db on transmit and receive because of the circular polarization whereas if i had a regular horizontal yagi and it would you know bounce off the signal uh, bounce off the surface of the moon and come back it could be vertical which the big guns can compensate easier so he said you know leave it alone but when i had this for testing the other day i had this at like zero degrees and uh john kf4 pfi was in palm bay now when i was I, I switched it to vertical first and he could hear me uh when i was vertical he was vertical when i when i rotated this whole thing 90 degrees to horizontal he was gone even even with maximum power he was gone 
Same thing with um, a repeater that is in Stewart, about 40 miles away from me. When I was vertical, I could hear the repeater horizontal. I only had like an S1 with the preamp. And like 15 degrees each way off that repeater, it would just totally wash out. So it's got some directivity to it. But is it supposed to be dominant on horizontal or vertical, or is it a combination of both? Because if, if that's the case, this is a horizontal Yagi right now. And I'm not sure the circular is working, but <clears throat> I got the uh, SWR where I need it. And um, I did receive traces on Q65 from a couple stations, but it wouldn't decode. It was really, really down in there. Now, I don't have a preamp. Okay, um, I do need to get a preamp. I was using some of this here. The, uh, this is 7 8 inch Heliax with some end connectors on the end, really good ones. All right, and that's a pain in the you know what, trying to keep that heavy and stiff line here and keeping the elevation azimuth where it was. So I had it finagled like on the chair right here, this old chair to where it was balancing it. And then I just slid the coax over a little bit and pulling on the antenna, it would do this, you know, right? So that's kind of what I was doing. However, I just wanted to make this video and show that we're almost in business. I, I want to prove to you that I can do this in the backyard because there was several comments that came in that I had to delete. You know, I'm an F and A hole. Um, uh, this will never work. Why do you think people spend half their life savings on 15 acres to build 48 element arrays? I'm stupid for trying this in the background, the, the backyard. The worst thing that would happen is this doesn't work for moon bounce. And I could use this as a satellite antenna. Or the best thing is it does work for moon bounce. And I could at least decode, receive, and possibly transmit probably easier at zero degrees on the horizon as it, you know, comes right up and rises on the ocean. I get like six dB of of ground gain facing zero right over the horizon whereas up there it's a little tougher plus there's you know perigee apogee you know different times of of the lunar orbit it's closer to the earth and farther away so that makes a difference also the the noise um you know i was using the 705 um and i couldn't see anything with the rig expert i could it wouldn't decode um but i need to get more familiar with hdsdr there might be some preamp uh, not preamp but uh, bandwidth settings i need to, uh, to manipulate here okay but this backyard's a mess here i was tearing all kinds of stuff apart you know weather stations over here apart and different things so anyways um you know don't give up don't give up on any projects so basically what it boils down to i had a problem in this box oh another one you see these uh, feed points here? I don't know if you can see this in the dark. Let me see. Right? You see You see how this is a, a, an encapsulated or epoxy. Let me see how I do this. There you go. It's like an epoxy box, right? And the little things come out of the side where you bolt onto the, you know, driven element. Well, I don't know if you can see this over here. But this one wasn't even connected inside. And if you look there, I don't know if you can see that. I had to take a soldering iron that I'll never use again, heat it up and wallow out that hole, smoke it all to hell to get that piece in there and solder it. So now I have continuity on both sides of this, which was a problem. I have um, continuity into here, okay? And I got the SWR down, like I said, about 1.2. And when I switch the circular polarization circuit, it goes up to about 1.35 SWR. I'm not sure. Why? I know also that the only way I got it that close on SWR, this one, about an inch and a quarter from the boom where it says in the manual, this one I had to get as close as possible. See how close that is to the boom? That's the only way it would tune. Um, so that is an update on this antenna. I am going, I repeat, I am going to show you that I could decode. Tomorrow is a de-expedition, EME, event there's going to be a ton of people bouncing signals off that moon and i want to be a part of decoding those i don't i mean there'll be a lot of big guns on there on the air so i might be able to make a transmit and make a contact because for what i don't have they do have backyard to backyard probably not possible backyard to big gun absolutely so um take a look at those elements one more time i got them man i got them pretty straight all right that's pretty straight. 
but those are pretty straight. A little bit of a sag with the boom in the middle. And you know, I need to do something about this. I got a hose clamp on here. I need to like grind that or sand it a little bit so it's smoother because you'll get a couple degrees and it pops, you know, you ever took PVC and it doesn't move nice and smooth. However, uh, I glued it here, here, here. That way those don't move. And then it just moves in here like this. Okay? So I can move it in here. All right, so that is um, the high gain UB7030 SAT, which is an Oscar satellite circular polarized antenna for UHF. 432 to 436, which I'm using, trying to use for moon balance. But if you think that I should take all this off and feed it with a switch, feed it both of these one at a time so I could switch from horizontal to vertical and, and gain a few dB, let me know. Because that's what they're saying online on the chat. And they said, you know, don't, don't make it overcomplicated because the other station on the other side, the big gun, will compensate for what you don't have. Um, so that's, that's the... Uh, that's the progress right now, guys. Uh, man, a lot of weekends being burnt on this thing, and uh, I'm, I'm determined. I'm really determined. Tomorrow is the big test. I hope I have a video for you tomorrow showing you that I could decode signals on UHF off the surface of the moon. 7-3.